Hello and welcome to Matt Parker's Math Solutions. I'm Matt Parker and the Math Solution this time is for the marching band problem. And I want to make it very clear, I have not put any marching band music into this video. I did put some in the original puzzle video, which I thought was very funny, but people very quickly let me know they either did not like that marching band music or, more importantly, they were unable to process what I was saying while the music was happening at the same time. And because I only put it in because I thought it was funny, I listened to everyone's comments and I re-uploaded the video pretty soon afterwards with far less band, like it's just a tiny bit in the background so everyone can equally enjoy watching the video. At the same time I also uploaded another video with more band because I knew some people would want more band. Both the original and the more band versions are unlisted videos and they're linked from the description of the original puzzle video, which is linked below. So you can check that out if you want. But I guarantee I have not put any band music into this video. So let's get straight into the solutions that people sent in. So this is MPMP 12. The okay. I did not put that music in here, so the presentation is not... It, you probably can't hear me, I have no idea what sound level that's coming through. Uh, hang on, wait, let me, let me... Sorry. Um, Deanna makes this uh, solution um, presentation for me. She goes through and helps me with all the emails, and then assembles this deck of slides, and she must have thought it was funny to put some band music in, because you all complained last time. So, anyway, sorry. Not my fault. Carrying on. So here are the stats uh, for the uh, video. So uh, first of all, we had 2,000, let me come back a little bit, there we are, uh, 2,148 correct solutions that people sent in, which is amazing, out of a uh, total of 2,768 total submissions on the form on the website. Thank you everyone who gave it a go. Uh, Oliver, who does the database, has already updated the league table, so you can see if you got speed points, if you got getting it correct points, and if you got giving it a go points. I will say a lot of people did complain that this one was a bit easy. Well, it's easy if you know the answer. I equally saw a lot of people saying, oh no, I thought it was easy, and then I realized I put the wrong answer in. So just because the correct, correct answer occurs to you very easily, doesn't mean it's easy for everyone. You just, maybe you've seen it before, or maybe it matches the way you think. Other people thought it was easy, it turns out they got it wrong. Uh, and we vary the puzzles. We wanna make sure everyone can have a go. Some of them are more straightforward than others. In theory, all of them have a reasonably low floor entry point and a very high ceiling if you wanna investigate more things as you go along. So well done. This case, 78% of you who submitted it got it right. Great work. Um, and the correct answer, for those of you who are wondering, the number of people you need in a marching band, so you can have 64 different arrangements as they march backwards and forwards, is 7,000. Ah, come on. That's... Can we, can we get a file photo? Have we got a shot of Deanna? We do. We do. All right, bring it in. There you are. That's... Let me go over there. Hang on. Right, that... Blame Deanna. Outrageous. Okay, sorry about that. My goodness. So anyway, correct answer. 7,560. So well done everyone. Uh, the 78% of you who submitted it and I uh, got that number. Congratulations. And uh, the puzzle to uh, just to, this was the official phrasing that we did, number of people in a band. It's an old problem. I've seen it previously phrased in terms of like armies marching in different directions. I thought a band would be more fun, so I changed it. Uh, and a lot of people did say, basically, in other words, what is the smallest number that has exactly 64 dividers? And yeah, that is, th that's what we're saying, right? And a few people even put that in the comments of the video. No spoilers, please, in the comments. But yeah, that's what we were asking. And so part of the puzzle was to get all these ridiculous words and realize that's, that's what you're trying to work out. Some people pretty quickly realized they can just go and get that from the online encyclopedia Encyclopedia of integer sequences. I'll go over here. There we are. That's out of the way. Um, and so, yeah, you can, people realize what it was they were looking for. And so what you really want, you just need the um, 64th term 
in this sequence. So uh, Jonathan um, Levy was one of the people who emailed in to say that is how they solved it, perfectly valid. If you can recognize the mass behind the puzzle, look it up in the OEIS. I have uh, literally zero problems with that. Uh, Dan used uh, Ruby, so, uh, and uh, actually printed out all the factors of 7,560, there they all are, all um, uh, 64 of them. I'll go over this side, there we go. Uh, so well done Dan for using um, Ruby. Who else we got? Matthew here used Visual Basic. Nice, sent in a screen grab of uh, um, <laughs> the outputs there. They, that's exhausting. Uh, exhaustive as well, I guess. Uh, they just went through and, and printed them until they got to 64. So there you are. I'm now going to press any key to exit. There we go. And uh, Petra um, found a whole load of numbers. So you can see above me there, there's 7,560, the smallest number. And I did specifically say the smallest number. That's exactly 64 and no more arrangements. Uh, and there's 9,240 is the next one up. And then 10,920. And look at all these numbers, all of them. They all have exactly 64 factors, uh, all the way uh, coming down here. Here's the first one. Uh, actually, I'll come down a smidgen. One million. I don't know where we're we up to. 100,000. 170. 100,224. So we're now in the huge numbers. Hundreds, thousands. Amazing, right? So any one of these would have, any of these bands. I mean, what a band some of these would be, you know? But any of these numbers, you have this many people in your band, I have exactly 64 arrangements. Um, we also got sent in some plots, so Felix here sent in, uh, they did all the numbers from 1 to 25,000 and then plotted them here on a bar chart. This is how many um, band sizes give you that many uh, arrangements. And, uh, but you can see the small ones disappear, right? Because there's a few that are absolutely huge. It's very, very easy to get four. Uh, so they also did it on a log plot. There you are, log plot of, um, oh, that one there, uh, 48 was taller than I expected. Um, there's a log plot of, uh, in the first 25,000 possible band sizes, how many of each one will give you a certain number of arrangements. Okay, so now um, we're gonna get into people who worked it out in a clever way. In programming, definitely a clever way. I'm not trying to undersell that, but a lot of people just did it in a kind of exhaustive way. So they either looked up on the um, OEIS or they wrote the code, which just searches through all the options. Some people thought, well, hang on, how do we work this out? And there's one concept I want to explain before I show you uh, my absolute favorite way that someone managed to do this. So um, I've got an example number, 1,944. I've just picked that because I thought it would be a nice example for what I want to show you. And a lot of people realize this has to do with the prime factors. And so if you get the prime factors of 1,944, you've, uh, you've got two uh, cubed, and then you've got uh, three to the five. So it's only got two prime factors. What I'm about to show you works for any number of prime factors with whatever powers. I just picked a nice example number which only has two prime factors, uh, three of one of them and five of the other one. And now, um, if you look at that two to the three and you're thinking, how many ways can I split that up into two numbers multiplying each other, because that's ways you can do arrangements. If you want to do them into a, into a block, you've got to have a width and then a height. So I'm ignoring three to the five to start with. If you just think, what are all the ways I can split up that first one? Two to the zero, that's, um, uh, that's I'm gonna go over here. Two to the zero, that's just one. So that's just two to the three times one. So that's everyone in a very long line. Then you've got uh, two times two squared, two times two to the four. And then you've got them the other way around because I said it doesn't matter which way you orientate your block of band members, it counts as separate. So in fact, if you add all these up, you've got four ways you can do it. And interestingly, four is one more than three, which was the power up here. And that's the moral of the story. Whatever the power is of your prime, there's one more than that. There's whatever that power is plus one ways to split it into two numbers that are multiplying each other. And then if you do the same thing over here with five, um, three to the five, there's six ways of doing it. And if I had another prime number, I could do that to that as well. And when you kind of put them all back together, so for one specific arrangement of all 1,944, you gotta pick basically one of these, and then you multiply it by one of these, and that will give you a whole block arrangement and, it, and you, you keep them that way around because we've already um, got the duplicates 
for having it one way versus the other way. And so actually, if you've got, I know I'm on top of them, but you've got the, you've got the four of these, and you multiply that four by six of those, you get 24, and sure enough, there are 24 ways that you can arrange 1,944 into a block, or rather, 1,944, if you include itself, has exactly 24 factors. And so, if, sorry, that's a little bit hand wavy. Uh, I mean, this is probably a whole video in its own right, but I thought I'd try and do a quick version here. Sorry, it's not great. Moral of the story is, if you increment all of the powers of your prime numbers in the prime decomposition of your number, if you increase them all by one, and then multiply them all together, you will get the total number of factors. There you are, that's it, that's what I'm trying to say. That's, that's it, okay, so the reason I'm going on and on and on about that is uh, Martha here did a fantastic bit of working out. And so this paper, I'll link to it in the description, is really good. And so, um, but, but Martina, sorry, not Martha, my fault, Martina, apologies, um, start, ha had that already in mind, but then started with how many um, total factors they wanted and then went back from there. So they were, they were like, okay, well I want 64 factors. So I know if I increase all the exponents of the prime factors by one and multiply them together, I'm gonna to get 64. And so here are all the ways you can multiply things together uniquely to get 64. There's 11 options. And so then what I need to do is uh, subtract one off all of those because um, if I have these exponentials, once I um, increment them all by one, I'll get the corresponding one over here, and then that will give me 64. So these are the powers, the 11 options for what the powers of the prime factors of whatever the total number can be. Um, and then you just work out which one's the smallest. So for each of these, to minimize the size of the number, Martina put the smallest prime with the highest exponent, and then multiply them all out, and sure enough, there it is they found that uh, 7,560 is the smallest one. A lot of people went down other paths of just going, oh, two's the smallest prime number, so it's two to the 63, or some people had two to the 64. Or people were like, oh, it must just be this, you know, 64 smallest primes, or 63 smallest primes and one. But it's interesting because, to keep it smaller, you can have multiples with the smaller primes, but because you've now got identical primes, you've got fewer combinations. So actually the whole thing I thought was a really interesting balancing act of which is the smallest number to have any given number of factors because you've got this trade-off of having more unique primes, gives you more combinations, but makes the number bigger, versus smaller primes, keeps the number smaller, but limits your number of combinations. And so there you are, the interesting balance that comes out there. Uh, at, uh, you want five and seven, just one of those each, and then three of each of two and three, there you go. And the next smallest one, what do we got? 9,000, there's your next smallest one. Um, although actually, of these types, so these are not necessarily the um, smallest ones in order, because you could take one of these arrangements, and instead of what Martina's done, which is to put in the smallest primes. So for this one um, here, I could go, you know what, I'm gonna move that cube. Instead of that cube being there on the two, I'm gonna move it onto the three. And, and you'd get a slightly bigger number because you, well, you divide it by eight, multiply it by 27, um, but you still have the same total number of um, factors afterwards. So, uh, so these are just the smallest cases for each of the 11 types that Martina... I've gotten distracted. Let's move on. A bunch of people did it working out by hand. So actually you can see that working out that Sam's done there, that line there, the product from k equals 1 to n of 1 plus, uh, well they've used an alpha uh, alpha k to represent the exponents of the prime numbers equals 64. That's exactly what I was trying to explain before and what Martina used. Sam has done it here, but uh, worked it out on the whiteboard. Good work. Good work, Sam. From the heck, what the heck, Um And Adam, Adam here uh, has a whole presentation. Similar logic is really nice. Uh, I'll link to it below. I think it's on um, Google Slides, or whatever they've got. Uh, it's in Google Docs. I'll link to it. Uh, James, again, lots of working out. And James had an interesting observation that the correct number, 7,560, uh, is between two primes. And they've also said that 9,240, next one up, is between two primes. And they're wondering, is that interesting? And so I um, quickly went and checked uh, over on Martina's one. If you get next one up is 13, 
440. If you go one below that, it's not prime. I also checked um, back on the exhaustive list we had earlier, the third case, third absolute smallest, just over 10,000, uh, is not between two primes. But it could, I don't know, maybe, maybe this was something in there. So James, nice observation. I don't think it leads anywhere, but I've only done the most cursory of checks. We're now into honorable uh, coding mentions. So um, Deanna likes to pick out a few of her favorite bits of code. This was the winner this time, Lizzie. And it came with Deanna's favorite email of the week because Lizzie said that um, them and their husband compete over who can solve the puzzles fastest. Either Lizzie writing code or their husband using Excel. This time, the code won by a long shot. I mean, I don't know, by default, I'm often team spreadsheets, but good work, Lizzie, and the code, as you can see there, that um, did it way faster than using a spreadsheet. So well done. Um, I'm not saying I'm gonna start coming up with puzzles that heavily favor spreadsheets over code, but I'm not gonna do that. That would just be a jerk. Alex sent in this as well. So, um, oops, Alex Goodall. I don't fully understand what's going on here. Um, they used uh, image J and they tried to show um, do a grayscale image, which has the number of marching band options as pixel intensity and the colors represent uh, green is the first occurrence of a power of two. Magenta is, is exactly two formations. So magenta ones are basically the primes and they've got blue, power of two possible formations. Why? Ah, I'll link to this below. Uh, but they've done this, this crazy, interesting visualization and I've uh, not had a close look at it, as you can tell, but I thought it was the first time someone did this, so I'll mention it. And uh, James. James did another James Explains video with a logo, I think, is specifically designed to annoy me, but I could be wrong. Thanks a lot, James. And I thought I'd put, okay, so James, we can't put your videos in every single time because I know you make them every single time and they're great. People, if you want to see them, just go and subscribe to James's um, channel where he's been putting these out. Again, I'll link to this one in the description below. But what was super nice is I had the thought, wouldn't it be interesting if instead of just doing a 2D flat arrangement of the band, what if it was in 3D? What if you had a cube? And so I was wondering if people would send in options for different dimensions. And by the way, we had an overwhelming amount of stuff sent in this time. We had over 350 emails of additional mathematics to send in. So not only could we not include all of that in this solution video, we couldn't even go through all of them. But we did very quickly, like we, we've seen every single email, but we couldn't go through and check the mathematics in every single one. So we're really sorry if you send something in, it's not been included. My apologies, we try to make sure we rotate the people who end up in this solution video, but there's, there's so much great maths, we just can't do it all. Don't be discouraged, keep sending it in, because like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna try and keep mixing it up. The reason I put James in again is they did the bit where they um, looked at different dimensions and it was really nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna park myself in the corner over here on the top, like that, there we go. And I've, I've taken the sound off James's video, but um, I, and I, I'm just gonna skip through it. They, uh, they recap what I did, blah, 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 how they worked it out, wah, wah, wah. And then here, now they're looking at, could you do it as a cube? Could you do it as a hypercube? Interesting, what about higher dimensions? And they managed to prove you can't do it as a cube. And the proof is really nice. So here they are, they're going through how many ways you can arrange different combinations of factors because people realize pretty quickly, all numbers have an even number of factors apart from square numbers because they've got like the same factor twice to get you the original number. So for the case of our marching band, every other combination of factors gives you a block that can go one of two ways, apart from if you've got the same number twice, then it doesn't matter if you rotate it. And so that's what uh, James is showing right now. That's, uh, oh, that is a great suggested video. Um, what they're showing right now is that in 3D, you've got all these different cases where if it's a cube number, you can only do it one way if you've got a two repeated um, numbers in your arrangement. You've got three options. If they're all unique, you've got six options. And they conclude that to be able to do it in 3D, uh, if you use all, all of these, if you include this one, so you have to have a cube number, 
That's the only way to get one more than a total multiple of three. And 64 is one more than a multiple of three. So they're able to just, it has to be a cube number. They went through all the cube number options and arrangements and showed that you don't get, um, you don't get 64. You either get 55 this way or you get 91, the next option up basically. So it can't be done, but amazingly, can be done in 40. There you are, there's all the options for 30. So, um, you know what, I'm gonna bring it. Oh, that's too many, too many. Where's the final, uh, there we go. I'm gonna pause that. So I'm gonna get me out of the way. So, uh, in, it, it's over there now. In conclusion, if you wanna do it in 2D, the smallest number is 7,560. If you wanna do it in 4D, it's 30. And that is solely because you've got 64 ways to arrange it and um, 30 is the smallest number with three distinct prime factors. Ta-da! Um, so, it, it, but amazing, amazing. I, I hadn't looked into it myself. So James, uh, that was absolutely amazing. Okay, so uh, finally I'm gonna come out of this arrangement. I'm gonna bring me back over there. Um, very, 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 the last thing I'm gonna do is, uh, Deanna went through and with Oliver, because people are saying, can we see the top um, rankings? They went and made a top 21 because they're numbered from zero to 20. So uh, there's your, whoa, there's your first um, break over there. Now, uh, there, there they are. There's, David is still coming in uh, at the top position. So well done, David, hasn't moved. Anton's now down to position two. Uh, and uh, that person is now in position two. And here we go, I'll break down. There's the rest of them, oh my goodness. Oh wait, sorry, one slide too far. That was me getting overly ambitious. And um, there we go. I don't know if you noticed, but I don't edit these videos, nor, strictly speaking, do I prepare that well. Okay, so anyway, there's the top 21. Well done, everyone. The full league table is up on the website. And the last thing I wanted to show you was that um, David, who is in the top position, has written an alternate, a aftermarket, non-official, non-endorsed league table for Matt Parker's maths puzzles and if you go on to um that can i bring that in i'll fade it in there you go um so david has made it where you can see your progress so instead of just getting your uh current score and position you can see how your position has changed over the week so well done david you said you were going to have less time in the future not more they've gone and made that so um uh, there it is. There, there, I'll, make, I'll make it small for a change. So there you go. Uh, so you can go, I'll link to that. I'll link to David's unofficial, non-endorsed league table where you can check out uh, how you how your score has changed um, over the weeks. And that is, um, that is it. Thank you so much um, for um, watching, as always, Matt Parker's Mass Puzzles. It's a, a huge amount of fun. Um, thank you. Wait, oh! It's not me. Oh, hey, whoa, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, whoa, whoa. Okay, so uh, th thank you so much for doing Matt Parker's Maths Puzzles. I apologize for the unpredictable and high variant amount of band. Uh, keep uh, watching the videos. Next one out soon.